All right, welcome to Telus and Physics. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about another one of Newton's laws, but it's not the three laws that we've already discussed. We're going to talk about the force due to gravity, but we know how to calculate force due to gravity on planet Earth because we know the acceleration of gravity on planet Earth. But what about everywhere else? And so that's where we come to the law of universal gravitation. And this relates the mass of two objects to the distance that they are apart. So what does this look like and what can we do with it? Well, the law of universal gravitation is calculating the force due to gravity. And it's going to be dependent on two different masses, right? A force is always between two objects. And so force due to gravity is based upon the mass of those objects. And it also depends upon the distance that those objects are apart, signified by r squared. So it, distance really matters, right? It's a squared function. This is known as an inverse square function. Because if I go twice as far apart, the force drops fourfold, right? And then mass is in kilograms and using SI units. R, the distance, is in meters using SI units, and I need to get to Newtons. And so we need a constant, and so it's big G. So big G is that constant. It was an experimentally determined constant that allows us to do this all in SI units. And so the value of that just happens to be 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. And then from a unit standpoint, we know we need to get to Newtons. We need to divide out kilograms squared, and we need to multiply meters squared. And when it talks about distance, right? So let's say I have the planet Earth, and I've got the moon way out here. The distance is referring to the center of mass. So we're looking at the center of mass. And then a question that I frequently get is, why is it R? Why isn't it D or something like that? So, you know, physicists use lots of different symbols for distance. Part of the reason that this makes some sense is, well, you know, like the moon goes in an orbit, right? And that orbit, that's the radius of the orbit. So, you know, that's kind of my rationalization of why, why R is used. But just realize it's a distance. So now, how can we take this idea and actually come up with the acceleration of gravity in any spot anywhere? So for our example, let's do it on Earth, right? Because on Earth, we know it's approximately 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. So what I'm going to do is I need to look up some stuff because, you know, I have this law of universal gravitation and you can look up what is the mass of the Earth? What is the distance to the center of the Earth, uh, say at the equator or something like that? And so the mass of Earth, you know, you can Google this and you can get 5.972 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. So it's a lot massive than more massive than we are, right? And then the distance to the middle of the Earth and that little symbol here, that's that's a symbol for Earth. The, the distance to the middle of the Earth is 6378 kilometers, which is the same as 6.378 times 10 to the um, sixth, because I moved that over, and k means three uh, meters. All right, but I want to know, I said acceleration. Okay, so acceleration due to Earth's gravity. So this is force due to gravity, and what we know on the surface of the Earth, and actually, that's if that's 9.8, this could be anywhere if g changes, little g changes. But usually we're talking about the surface of the Earth. Since this is how I calculate FG, and this is how I calculate FG, there's no reason why I can't set those equal to each other. So I will. So I have the law of gravita uh, universal gravitation equal to mg. And then, okay, then another question that comes up was, what m am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about, let's say, the mass of me. What's the acceleration of gravity on me on the surface of the Earth? Well. I calculate my or my force due to gravity by mg. So that means that m is me. So it doesn't matter, right? And that should make sense because the we know the acceleration of Earth's gravity doesn't matter what the mass of the object is. So here's the math that proves that. All right? And then I can go ahead and I can calculate this. 
And so one thing that I want you to, to um, know and understand is when you're using a calculator, and there's a little bit of a glare. Let's see. Eh, it's too dark. So what? let's see if we can angle it away. There we go. So a lot of calculators have a function. On this one, it's I hit second, and there's a button here that says EE. That is the way that I recommend that you put in scientific notation into a calculator. So what do I need to do in this particular case? Well, G is 6.67, and I hit EE. Oh, maybe I should turn it on first. So it's 6.67, EE, negative 11. And so I don't need parentheses to do that. It's all no, It knows that's one number. And then what do I have to multiply by? I got to multiply by the mass of Earth, so times point or 5.972, EE, uh, 24. And then I need to divide by 6.378, EE, 6. And I will square that and hit equals. And then what do I get? I get little g equals 9.79 meters per second squared. So it's pretty darn close, right? So, you know, we'll, 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 we'll call that 9.8 meters per second. It's based on average. It's, it's, it's based on, on, on things like that when I calculated that. So that's fine, right? That's, that's with an error, error of the experimental value. All right. So then there's one more thing I want you to think about, okay? So I want you to answer this question right now. You know, we've got the planet Earth with the radius r. What happens if I now have, um, let's say I'm on a satellite that's orbiting the Earth, you know, so I'm out here, and I want to know what the, so it's another distance r away from the center of the Earth. I want to know what is the acceleration of Earth's gravity. And I don't want you to recalculate it using all of these numbers. I want you to think about what does this tell you it has to change to? What in this changes? So let me give you a second to think. Okay, so what changes? So G is a constant. The mass of the Earth doesn't change. What changed? Right here. The distance to the middle doubled, right? So instead of being r distance from the middle of the Earth, it's 2r. And this is squared, right? So that actually tells me that my acceleration due to Earth's gravity must be four times less. It must be four times less. And so that's approximately 2.45 meters per second squared. And here's another interesting thing to think about. Out there, like that, you feel weightless. Why is that? Why would you feel weightless? I just calculated there's an acceleration due to Earth's gravity, even in orbit around the Earth. Hmm. Well, basically, you're falling towards the Earth at the same rate of curvature. So you're a perpetual free fall. This acceleration causes you to go around the Earth. But your sideways velocity keeps up with the, the curvature of the Earth. All right. So what do we what do we learn from today? So what we learned from today is that we can actually calculate the force due to gravity anywhere in the universe if we know a couple things like mass and the distance between the objects. And then we can also predict things like what's the acceleration due to gravity based upon this equation. All right, so I hope you learned a little something today and we will see you next time.